and she's returning to her hometown of Altoona, PA, Timmy Liscom! Hey guys, hi! I'm back! I'm back! What's that saying? If you can't make it in New York, then come back to Altoona! Yes. I love it. Um, so I'm celebrating today because I am actually 84 days sober today. So, thank you. <laughs> Being pregnant sucks. <laughs> okay. People are like, oh my gosh, it's a gift from God. I'm like, really? I think it's a DUI from the universe. <laughs> That's what I think it is. Can't drink, smoke, and if anything goes wrong, it's my fault, okay? <laughs> Go to jail. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, you guys, um, I'm 40 years old, and you know that saying, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm 40 years old, and you know that saying where it's like, uh, that, um, that I don't regret anything in my life because it brings me where I'm at now. I regret everything now. Okay, this is, okay, this is it. All right, I love it. So I'm 40 years old, and I don't have a plan either. You know, it's just like you would think I don't. You would think I would have a plan by 40, but I don't. You know, it's just you know it by the tone of how your your family talks to you. So my dad, when he said congratulations, he was like, you know, you can't drink. I'm like, um, is that a challenge, or are you, are you asking that? Are you trying to be my sponsor right now? I don't know what's the... Also, <laughs> my sister's like, surprise, you're not gonna have a baby shower. We're just gonna put a GoFundMe together for you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's for people in hard times and Amy's baby shower. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I don't know. Um, so, um, I actually didn't want to have a kid until later in my life. So I wanted, I, I, for the longest time, didn't even want to have a kid until I was 45. And I'm 40 now, and I knew this about my, myself a long time ago, so I actually, a while ago, froze my eggs. Yeah. I spent $13,434.10 freezing my eggs. Yes, I counted that shit out, okay? The, to the penny, 10 cents, freezing my eggs, all right? And, um, and then also, every year that I do not use my eggs, I have to spend another thousand dollars just to keep them frozen. All right? Yeah, yeah. You guys, this is a generic oopsie baby. <laughs> it's a geriatric generic baby. What the fuck, okay? <laughs> you guys don't understand. I spent $13,434.10 freezing my eggs, plus an extra $1,000 every every year from then on. Already, and I'm supposed to have this kid at 45 and it's early, okay? This kid owes me about $20,000 already, okay? He's like, I'm gonna want college. I'm like, no, that's for the young 32-year-old egg, okay? You get nothing. Let me give you your walker, okay? <laughs> oh my gosh. People always kept saying to me, they're like, oh, why do you want to have kids so late in life? Because I'm doing it for the right reason, so they can take care of me, okay? <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a thing going on. I'm pregnant now. Um, I, um, oh, uh, Side note, you guys, has anyone ever gotten so far into debt that all of a sudden money doesn't mean anything to them anymore? <laughs> I feel like it's just gonna get worse. You know when it's going bad, too. You do, because you start doing crazy things, you know, just seeing how far you can actually push the limits. And it's like, I, this happened to me. I went into a, a bagel shop, and they said, this bagel with cream cheese was $10.45. Yeah, it was, the, I was like, <laughs> Well, you know what I want? Give everyone in this room a bagel and cream cheese, okay? Because that's what you do when you don't have any money. You just like see how far it can go until, I don't know, you get arrested. But it's just like, you're like, come on, discover. <laughs> like who needs Vegas when your credit card may or may not go through? <laughs> you always know how bad your financial problems are by how obscure your like credit cards are. You're like, um, please take the Blockbuster Rewards credit card. <laughs> yes, just try it. Just try it. 
I love when my credit card does go through because it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even pay for it. It's a gift, right? I don't know. <sighs> I make bad financial decisions, I don't know. Um, uh, <laughs> this is true. Has anyone um, ever paid a psychic $300 to tell them about your past lives? <laughs> no, no, just me, okay. Yeah. It's funny, I, I love psychics, I really do. But the sad thing is, you would think that I would kick this habit by now. No, I should be reading books about uh, what to be expect when expecting now. I'm like 300 pages deep into John Edwards' book. Do you know who he is? Yes. Yeah. He's amazing. Because my baby needs to know his astrology chart, okay? That's what it needs. It needs that. No, I, I paid this guy $300 for, um, for me to, to figure out my past life. If you don't know what your past life is, you shouldn't. Because it happened before this life, okay? <laughs> That's it. I paid someone $300 to be like, you were a chicken before. I'm like, really? <laughs> A chicken! Oh, awesome! That was all fascinating. But this is where it gets weird, okay? At the, <laughs> at the end of my reading, he was talking to me, and he was like, you know what I think you would be into that is really interesting that I think would be good for you is ayahuasca. <laughs> and at the time, I didn't know what it was, but as he's describing it to me, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. You want me to do drugs? <laughs> If you don't know what ayahuasca is, it's a huge hallucinant. I don't know, but it's, but it's... Then he looks at me like I have three heads. And he's like, didn't you just pay $300 for this reading? I'm just trying to tell you what you can financially do better for your money, okay? All right. You guys, I'm from this hometown. My parents don't know this story. I don't know if they're mad at me that I spent $300 for this psychic or proud that I said no to drugs, okay? I don't know. But, We'll see, we'll see. I don't know. I, um, uh, so um, I did a lot of stuff during the pandemic. Um, the one thing I did learn about the pandemic is if I have time, I will waste it. <laughs> Anyone, uh, we'll get into the all, oh my gosh, Netflix is my friend. Um, so uh, I actually got proposed to when I was, I got proposed and married when I, during the pandemic. Um, when I got engaged, people were like, oh my gosh, are you surprised? I'm like, surprise, ultimatum, tomato, tomato. I don't know. <laughs> Great. So, so beautiful. You know, I don't know. We've dated him for six years. I don't know. Oh my gosh. And then I got married. I, it's, it's just weird to me because it's like, I had, I had this, you, you know, everything shut down in New York. I don't know if you if you know about the living situations in New York, but New York is not meant to live in, okay? It's meant to uh, sleep and then pay rent. That's it, okay? And um, so I ended up um, actually getting married during the pandemic when all these people were breaking up and getting divorces. And I was like, I felt bad about it until like people from, I don't know, Pennsylvania told me that they were getting a divorce or something like that, Ohio. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you actually have a door to close on someone when you're in a fight? Like another room to go to? You have another room to go to. All right, I'm sorry. Do you have an upstairs and downstairs? I don't get that, okay. Do you know what, do you guys know what our back door is? Because you guys all have back doors, right? Front doors and back doors. Do you know what our back door is in New York City? It's, it's called a fire escape, okay? And sometimes if the landlord is not up to code, then you just have a decision to make. That's it. <laughs> okay? That is it. That's how you get out of the situation. I don't know. It's so bad. Uh, but it's weird. I feel like it made me stronger. You know, like now I feel like if anyone comes to me to like have their, you know, want my approval for their marriage or whatever, it's like they're like, oh, that's grandma. She survived the pandemic. <laughs> she has her own oxygen tank with her because she doesn't trust the government's air. It's like, <laughs> you know. I feel like in order for me to give a blessing to any of my children, for them to get married, I'm like, have you lived a year in a box with someone? <laughs> He's not your true love. 
if you can't survive the box. <laughs> so, I don't know. So I got um, I got uh, married. Um, oh, uh, just a side note. If you spend about like eight to six months trying to slim down for your wedding, don't get married in Iowa City, okay? Um, <laughs> they treat like high fructose corn syrup like vitamin D there. I don't know. <laughs> One meal, 16 pounds. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but um, I had a, a pretty good wedding. The, the, the main, the weirdest thing that I got from, from the wedding was, um, was um, uh, everyone kept asking me, how was the night after the wedding? Like, after the wedding? I was like, I've been dating the same guy for six years. Is there something I don't know? You know? I can't, I was like, the night after the wedding, and then it made me start thinking. I was like, oh my gosh, is this why everyone gets married? Because the sex gets amazing? Is this why? It's like this old guy from the corner, it's like, oh, you're having relationship problems? You just need to marry the girl. <laughs> I don't know. So honestly, you guys, it's true. After my wedding, I grew a tail. It's there, I swear. No, I like in the ass now. No, just I'm joking. I'm joking. Mom, Dad. Joking. My husband's like, are you sure that's just a joke? I'm like, yeah. no. Um, I'm glad, no, I'm, I seriously, I'm glad that I'm not dating anymore, okay? Because it's just like, I even still hear some of my girlfriends that are dating, like my girlfriend's like, I don't know where I stand with this guy. I've been dating him for a year. He takes me out all the time, but I don't think he's committed to me. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You are dating someone with way too much money. <laughs> you need to date a poor person. I'm sorry. If he takes you out for one dinner, he's ready to propose, <laughs> okay? That's what you, you know, they're like, well, when was the first date? You know when I walked you to your car and I introduced myself? <laughs> I don't know. But, um, no, this, my other girlfriend was like, um, um, she actually caught her, her boyfriend cheating on her, actually walked in on the, on the act happening. Yeah. Not good. Not good, not good, not good. Devastated her. So she got, she got him back. You know what she did? She found the girl that, that she cheated on her with, like was in the act also. She found that girl, then decided to sleep with the girl. Yeah, and then timed it perfectly because women are awesome for him to walk in on them. <laughs> Having, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't think that was a punishment. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry. You're trying to rob me right now? Do you just like want all the money? Let me just throw it at you. Let me just like make it easy for you. <laughs> Someone's been stealing my lunch from work. Let me just put a three course meal together for you. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> so um, I've never been in a threesome, but I've been offered. And I have to t t brag about this because it's like, you know, didn't win the Oscar, but it's good to be nominated. It's always good, you know? It's great. I got an offer through a text message from a guy that um, that obviously wasn't thinking that we were serious. <laughs> it's a great way to find out that you're not this this guy is not taking you seriously when they're offering three sums to with someone else. You're like, oh, that's great. Um, so he he actually wrote, as a gentleman, would you like to have a threesome with me and this Brazilian girl? I'm like, oh, how proper. <laughs> would you? <laughs> it, but it, it was weird to me. Because I don't know if you guys know this, there are rules when there comes to threesomes, especially when it's two girls and one guy. Because if it's two girls and one guy, I'm sorry, the girls do the choosing, not the other way around. Okay, that's that's like that's the polite way. So I was like, this is weird. What kind of ego does he have? And also, I don't think he knows how girls work. Have you ever tried to get two girls to be friends? I'm sorry. Yeah, you're like, hey, you're a girl and a girl. You'll be fine, right? <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know. Now, try to be vulnerable in front of them. I was more scared of what she was going to think about me. I'm sorry. Everyone's like, all oh, the guys are like, we don't care about your nails. We don't care about your purses. I'm like, she does, though. She does. They know if it's a dip or a gel. I know that we got a dip. 
generic or not. <laughs> no, they know. I'm telling you, any girl will know if this is a real diamond or not. <laughs> okay? <laughs> They'll know. I love it. Um, so, so it's just like, I could not even imagine walking in on that situation and just her being like, next! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm already an insecure person. I can't have her. And also, he set it up completely wrong. He said, would you like to have a threesome with me and this Brazilian girl? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I already don't have like a leg in the race or whatever that, I don't know what the <laughs> saying is. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Brazilians, you can't, you can't have a bad looking Brazilian. It just doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't happen, they don't exist. There's no such thing as an ugly Brazilian. It just doesn't happen. So I just wanted to know what he said to her to like, about me. <laughs> like, oh, don't worry. There's this great American mutt I know. <laughs> great. <I don't> know. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I was kind of, so, um, um, when I was growing up, uh, I'm only doing this joke because my mom's in the room. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, uh, this is true. When I was going through puberty, my one boob was growing faster than the other one. Okay, this is, was literally flat chested and had, had fully developed the other way around. And also, this is a great note. If anyone has kids, you ever want to make someone feel insecure about themselves and not have sex early? Uh, just say there's something wrong with them. Like, hey, you going to that party? Is your ear just supposed to be that close to your eye? <laughs> no? Okay, okay. All right, go, go, go have fun. Just go, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't know what I saw, I don't know, I don't know. Okay? <laughs> just, all right, because I totally, it just <laughs> made me an honest woman. So anyways, I was just, I had no idea what to do. I kept this a secret for the longest time. And um, finally, I broke and I was like, I found a solution. And I, my solution was, tell my mother. That was my great idea. So then I get my mother in the room, and her reaction was like, oh, what the hell's wrong with you? It's okay. And you know what she does next? It was brilliant. She brings my dad in. Why not shove the penis in here? Come on, get the penis in. I was like, oh, great, great. All right, this is wonderful. So now... Now we have people examining, looking at my chest. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. So, no, but then my mom did the great, best thing ever because I don't know if you know her. She's what any good Italian mom would do. She got opinions of 200 of her neighbors. Okay? This is lovely, lovely. Okay. And then finally, finally, um, <laughs> finally, she takes me to the doctors and and the doctor didn't even have me take off my shirt. He just had me explain to him what was happening. And he goes, oh, it's normal. The other one will catch up. It's fine. It's completely normal. Just no one ever talks about it because it's so embarrassing. Right, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys with this. Um, well, the one thing I do, I, I did get out of this pandemic and stuff, is that I feel like um, people take things more seriously now. Like, do you remember when, um, you know, they don't take things for granted. They take things more seriously. Like, I, I got really annoyed. This happened a while ago when people were, like, saying, saying things like um, they were calling themselves brave for, like, not wearing makeup. Do you remember this? And they were posting things on like, you know, Twitter, like, I did it! <laughs> you know? And it was always mostly hot women doing this. I don't know if you know this, but when a hot woman takes off her makeup, she's still hot. Okay, that's what categorizes them in hot. But um, the whole thing is, is like, like you know, I, I just couldn't believe they were being called brave, you know? You know what brave is? Putting that picture of you without your makeup and your first nose, okay? That's what's brave, okay? <laughs> Sorry. I didn't want to do this. It just, it just like, gets to me, but, um, there was one time where, like, <laughs> sorry, I can't, I don't want to do this. Um, I was running late for work and I had to get on the subway with no makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> Not one person 
gave me their seat. I was a fucking war hero that day. Fucking war hero. Sorry, sorry. It's just like, it's just the thing is too, is like, I don't know what to say to like, a young girl uh, who's having an image complex, because it happens all the time. Like, what am I supposed to say to them? Like, oh, you see this picture of Beyonce? It's all airbrushed. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> um, actually, she has a ton of makeup on. Um, no, um, she doesn't. Um, you're gonna have to learn to love yourself. Okay? <laughs> I don't know. All right, you guys, thank you so much. I'm going to